Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we, we. You and me. Me and you. It's the Danny Karen Show. Danny Karen here. You know what's good. I mean, really good. Well, this is a disclaimer because this episode is going to talk about asexuality. So if you feel uncomfortable about watching a video about asexuality or just sexu sexuality in, in general, this video is not for you. Um, it, it's not graphic, but some viewers may feel mm, a little uncomfortable. Um, viewer discretion is advised. I do not recommend this video uh, for children. Thank you. Danny Karen here. You know what's good. I mean, really good. <laughs> anyway, it's weird. Um, so in a previous video, I talked about my new phone, and I talked about how it doesn't come with notepad, and I felt it was weird and strange how it didn't come with notepad. And I was just like, well, why do I have to download it from the internet? Why can't it just, like, be there with the phone, you know, as a default app like all these other apps? Like, they have, like, so many apps on that phone that, like, I don't even look at, like, uh, Games of Thrones app and, like, all these, like, games and stuff like that that, like, I don't even look at. It's crazy. The Android S10e is crazy because they give you apps that you don't even need or think about throughout your day, you know, Unless it's a generic, you know, app that's been around for like a million years in cell phone history, why give it to me? Especially when it's like specified for Games of Thrones. Does everybody watch the Games of Thrones? Not I, said the cat. It's crazy. It's like, it's too much. It's like, it's in your face and it's like, it's scary. And it's like excessive. It's an excessive amount of apps. And I'm so flustered, I had to take a breath. Anyway, um, my next guest is uh, very awesome. She was here last year with us. And it's pretty nifty. And uh, I'm going to give her a better introduction uh, when she comes out here because I. I have an idea. So please welcome Nicole. Yay! Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> um, I like to say, I like to thank you because you're the best interview that I've ever had on the show. Are you serious? For I the am last serious. Year? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I show people, I talk to people about coming on the show, and they're just like, well, well what is it about? Can you show an example? And you're the example. Yay! <laughs> and uh, getting on to the topic of, of today, like sometimes, you know, I, I talk to women to get on the show, and they're just like, why is this strange man talking to me? Like, I probably doesn't even have a show. And like, I, this is weird. And then I show the interview that you're on, and they're just like, oh, it's real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like... You know, they're like, he's like, oh, he really does want to interview me. Oh, like, you know, he, you know, he's had, it's just so funny. It's coming with like today's topic. He's had experience with other women before. So, you know, I, I might as well just go on the show because it was you and there's a few others that like I've had it on the, in the past, but you're the best example because Aww, of the thanks. set, because, because of the banter, because of the chemistry, um, you follow directions really well. You don't curse. No, I don't curse. She does. She never curses. <laughs> never. And um, you're a little, you're kind of off frame. Oh, I'm off frame. Oh no. No, out, not in. Out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I gotta say, like that makes you super cool. That dear, you're, you're the poster girl <laughs> of like the Danny Karen show because I show people like you know this is the best episode. It's just missing. Um, the theme song. Oh, you have a theme song? I do have a theme song. Ah, that's I don't so cool. sing it though. Okay. I don't know how to sing. I do know how to sing, but I don't do it well. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, um, so today's topic is going to be, um, 
a little a little out there, a little different, a lot of a uh, little less artsy and a little more personal. A little <laughs> more personal, a little yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. She said it, <laughs> I did not. And it's it's different because today <gasps> we're talking about sexuality. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, you know, everybody and their mom, well, they should be aware of at least, at least bisexuality. Everyone watching this hopefully is over 13 <laughs> to a point. No, nah, some of them aren't. Well, whatever. Okay. They, they got parents. Got, yeah. Who should be monitoring their YouTube activity may they, or may they not They should. Be. They should. <laughs> but honestly, the parents, and, the parents that I know that watch this, they probably encourage their kids to watch it. Okay. <laughs> They've seen worse videos. Mm -hmm. They've seen me do worse videos. Believe it or not. I believe it. Yeah, you should. So, like, so, you know, uh, the majority of uh, the people, they know about uh, homosexuality, bisexuality, uh, different things heterosexuality. On the, yeah, different things on the LGBTQA spectrum. L G T P. Wow, it's a lot of <laughs> lot of lot of letters. L L lesbian G gay B bi L G B T L G B T. Yes, I'm getting there. T trans B T Q queer L G B T Q um, A, which usually stands for one of two things: either allies, meaning somebody who is heterosexual, heteronormative who supports the um, LGBT community. Mm -hmm. And then what we're talking about today, A also stands for asexuality. Asexual. So what is asexuality? So the, the, our, our, our brief introduction to this is that asexuality is somebody who lacks sexual attraction. Wow. Like, 100%. Yes. Well, so there's like, there's like, whatever all around. What does that mean? <laughs> there's whatever. It's like, oh my goodness, this is quite a discussion. But like, we just started. Let's take, me for, let's take me for example. Like, I look at someone and I'm like, wow, they have nice arms and hands <laughs> and like stuff of that nature. Like, someone that's not, that's somebody that's asexual. They're not going to be like that. They're not going to be like, wow, nice hands. Not necessarily. Okay. So if you break it down, the the primary stance of asexuality, more or less, is right. that they don't experience sexual attraction. But there are varying levels of asexuality within, much like there is a spectrum of LGBTQ, there is a spectrum of asexuality as well. Right. Where some people, they can be romantically attracted to somebody. Right. Meaning, like, they could find someone, uh, you know, they... they they want to be in a romantic relationship. They can physically find somebody attractive, but they have no desire to have sex, n like ninety nine percent of the time. So, so you, so they, so do you have physical attraction? Yes, some asexuals have physical attraction. So, so you, so you have, so there's physical attraction, but there's no drive or desire to have sex. Correct. So there's a that's difference. what it is. Yes. So there's a big difference between maybe someone who has a physical attraction. And then you can break it down into whether someone has a romantic attraction or a sexual attraction. 90% of the population has both a romantic and a sexual attraction towards, more, towards people. But asexuality, which unfortunately only takes up a small 1% of the world's population, 99% of them have no sexual attraction. So you have no sexual attraction? Mm -mm. So you don't look at somebody or like think sexual thoughts? Right. Really? Really. You don't get excited? Nope. No. No. That's cr interesting. <laughs> wow. I, I, that's in, it's like, I heard something about you, Me. you, <laughs> that your, your claim is no sex until marriage. Yes, but that's also a completely different topic too. That is. Yes, because um, since asexuality is not really a well-known thing, right? Um, back when I was in high school and college, pretty much leading up to coming out as asexual three years ago, 
I firmly believed in abstinence until marriage. Now, mm-hmm. part of that was because I was raised Catholic. Many Catholics and Christians believe that. And it's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing was that I wasn't ready for something like that. And the more I thought about it and the more, you know, stuff like this kind of came up, I realized I'm not ready for this, nor will I ever be ready for this. And right. then I was lucky enough to find a documentary called A Parentheses Sexuality or Asexual. And I really related to the people in this documentary and did some research on websites like Avon.org and came out as asexual. Wow. That's, that is so cool. <laughs> it's interesting. Like, um, so, um, let's go, let's go in the past. Like, has it ever became like an issue like in the past? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Considering the fact that when I came out as asexual, I was engaged to somebody. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I know that somebody. I know you do. We're not going to talk about We're it. Not gonna but... talk. We're not going <laughs> to name any names. No. But, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of hard where, unfortunately, I had to break off my wedding about uh, six months leading up to the wedding uh, because I came out as asexual. Mm-hmm. And I realized that it wasn't fair for me to expect somebody that I was with and cared about to give up something they enjoyed, nor was it fair to me to have them force me to give up something I was, scratch that, reverse it. Um, it wasn't fair to me to do something I was horrifically uncomfortable with. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like, you know, there's some things that, like, I will not do. I, unfortunately, I was kind of, like, I was kind of pressured into it, really. Oh, I'm sorry. When I was, like, when, when I was 29 years old, I was pressured into it. How old are you now? Um, 34. Okay, I'm 29. I didn't realize you are that much older than me. I thought you were, like, maybe 30. <laughs> no. But go on. Um, I would say uh, my my friends, um, a bunch of dudes, and, and they had girlfriends, and they all have wives now, but whatever. Um, what they did was... A bunch of them lost their virginities at a young age. Mm. And then, like, the three remaining guys was me and, like, two other dudes. And they put us into a race. And it was basically, like, to see, like, who would last the longest or who would, you know, who would go first, second, and third. Uh. And, like, that really put the pressure on me. There was that. And, um... There was that, and my uh, ex-girlfriend at the time put the pressure on me too, and I was just like, well, I'm in this race that I didn't even sign up for. Yeah. And like, you know, and and she really wanted to, and I was just like, "Ah," like that. And you really didn't want to. I really didn't want to, and like... You got pressured into it. I got pressured into it, because I was just like... Well, it's now or never, and I was 29, and of course, like, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be the 40-year-old virgin, Hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, unfortunately, that movie, like, pressures people into, you know, losing their virginity at, like, before 40 years old. Yeah. And, like, I feel... I feel like a lot of it has to do with, like, toxic masculinity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because, well, you don't know, but I'm going to tell no, you No, I don't know is. from experience, but I, I'm aware of toxic masculinity, and it's a problem. Yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how it goes. So that, um, that movie pressures people into losing their virginities before the age of 40. Yeah. And, like, you know, it, what it really comes down to is toxic masculinity. Which is basically, well, you know what it is. Yeah, I'm, but, a, I'm aware of toxic masculinity, but obviously I've never experienced it myself. Right, right. So, um, I experienced it. So, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a scenario, because like, some people don't even know, some people do know, some people just hide it away. So, there's a group of guys, and usually it's, it's, it's in the locker room, or in somebody's house, but mostly in, in a locker room. And the, the, al- the alpha male, the leader of the pack... He'll be like, yo, he'll, he'll say something about doing something with this girl or multiple girls or whatever the case is to make the other ones jealous, so to speak. 
and he probably did nothing or it's a very, very watered down version of what actually took place. Mm, yeah. Right? So he'll say whatever and all the guys will be like, yeah, yeah, I did this, I did that. And then some people will just be like, well, I didn't do anything. And, and they'll, then they'll the, chew to themselves. They'll pick on them. Yeah. That. So basically, um, and then you leave that uh, situation, but you don't really leave the situation, like, ever. Yeah. Like, if you go to public school, you never leave that situation. Like, that situation is stuck in my head. Like, there's been times where, like, I've been on dates, and, like, there's no kiss at the end of the date, and I'll drive home, and I'll be like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. No. Aw, Danny. <laughs> I'll just be like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe that, you know nothing came about this and like I was sitting all this time and gas and money blah blah, blah. and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look stupid in front of all the guys but then I have to remind myself that I didn't tell anyone I was going on a date yeah so like nobody knows I was going on a date it also doesn't really yeah. matter I mean you know if you were hoping for things to work out that way you know that's one thing but to feel embarrassed about something just because everybody else does it, that's really horrible peer pressure. Yeah. And the sad thing is, is that, like, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed, and, like, I don't want people to find out, but then again, they're not going to find out. But I'm always going to have that mentality. It's, it's like people with ex- exes, like, a lot of the times, like, a lot of people would just be like, um... My 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 ex was abusive, so uh, you know we're not gonna do X, A, B, and C, or you know my my ex boyfriend used to do that, where the case was, and I'd be like, but I'm not your ex boyfriend. Right, and that's kind of a tricky. Yeah. it's kind of a tricky thing too, especially when it comes to abuse situations. A lot of times, it's really just a matter of you know hold off on whatever A, B, and C is, and let your relationship grow and trust. Yeah, like I was told. This one girl didn't kiss on the first date because, um, because she kissed her boy, her ex boyfriend too much or something like that, and like he was abusive. Mm, okay. But like I was just like whatever. But she ended up kissing me anyway. Okay. Yeah, it was weird. I think we're getting off topic. We are. Getting, <laughs> I'm really good at getting off topic. <laughs> but like, yeah, it was just like, whatever. It was like, um, she was like, oh, I don't kiss on the first date. And then I hugged her goodbye. And then she, like, gave me a kiss and I gave her a kiss. Oh, that's sweet, though. And then we just started kissing from there. Okay. But it's interesting. I don't know why I'm going on with this. You started off with toxic masculinity and then we went to your history. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but um, I just got to say, is that, like, um, yeah, all these, like, crazy dating scenarios and like yeah. the pressure to like lose your virginity is all because of toxic for virgi- toxic virginity. <laughs> <laughs> toxic masculinity like i could think of like movies like revenge and the nerds and american pie yeah it's, it's like there's like, this there's, there's this glorified weird, yeah there's this weird stigma and i mean toxic masculinity is terrible but i mean girls get plenty of that too Right. Um, not nearly as bad though. I mean, at least in my own situation, it, it, it goes both ways, but it's just this terrible stigma that it's like, oh, if you're a young adult of any kind, you should not be a virgin, know this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, it's so tricky because amongst most of the population, especially in America, everything's so overly sexu- sexualized, but yet on the flip side, there's so many people who are, I don't want to say pious, but they're very much like, no, 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 you should wait, you should do this, that, and the other thing. Well, it's like, well... It's really hard for people to, you know, choose and discover for themselves. Because, I mean, I personally am very against premarital sex just simply for the fact that you don't really know where you're going to be in however many years. And I feel like it's something, if, if you are going to do it, it's something special you should share. But that doesn't mean that anyone else has to listen to my ideas of it. Right. So there should be no, like, something like that, there should be no pressure right. <laughs> at all. And unfortunately, there always is. I mean, even, like, if I had known asexuality was a thing, I would have come out at 15. I would have came out at 15. And my earliest memory of thinking something like that was when um, I was in English class reading Romeo and Juliet. And we all read it together aloud as a class. And in the very beginning of the play or the book, um, 
there's a woman named Rosalina. Never comes up again in the rest of the play. It's Romeo and Juliet. But Romeo has this thing for this girl named Rosalina, and he officially stopped trying to court her because she basically said, I want to remain chaste and um, absent in the rest of my life, which, of course, him as a man looking to get married wasn't for that. Right. And which is fine for Romeo. It's, it's good thing he just dropped it and didn't try to force anything. Um, but everybody in the class laughed at that. And I was so confused as to why that was funny. Right. Why is it funny that that's her choice? That's her choice. She's sticking with it. Why is that funny? Right. And then throughout high school, you know, I dated various guys. And I, I'm friends with most of my exes. None of them ever pressured me into anything. Um, but it was strange that my boyfriends didn't pressure me into anything. But girls in my class would? Like, really? Yeah, there would be several girls who once they found out that I was dating someone, every single freaking day would ask, have you had sex with him yet? Right? That's crazy. Yeah. So, like... It's like, yeah, it is like the same way with women, but like, you guys get like lighter. Yeah, we get it more di- like a, a like Diet a, Coke. We <laughs> <laughs> you get the Diet Coke of of peer pressure and toxic femininity or whatever. It I is. mean, it it depends on the person, it depends on the situation. Yeah. It can be just as toxic either way. But I know what you mean. Where it's like with girls, it's more catty peer pressure. Where with guys, it's super macho peer pressure. It really is. And I think like the main difference between. Toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. Most of the times, you know, the femininity pretty much goes around to girls your own age, at least in my, in my experience. Um, whereas with masculinity, it's something that you like grow up with. You, yeah. From not only the peers like that are the same age as you, but from your peers that are like your your family members, your teachers and coaches, the people you look up to. Yeah. Yeah, well, not in my house, but, like, in other people's houses. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, there's, like, you know, like, you know, men don't cry, and, like, those those crazy catchphrases, and, like, you gotta be good at sports. Yeah, it sucks. You gotta be, like, athletic, and, and then you see these memes that are just, like, you know, my, 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 my favorite one to hate would have to be, like, her hands are very clean because his hands are really dirty. What? Or, like, because he's, like, fixing cars and, like, doing construction or something Oh, like all right. And, like, and like you know, women are not supposed to do this. Men are supposed to do that. And, like, Yeah, it's the whole, roles. like, gender roles, which which sucks. I think it should be just based on, like, individuals. Exactly. Rather than, like, how we formed it as society. Like, I feel like... And that that's the main thing where, like, if, you know... If you personally, if you're in a relationship and you personally feel that a man should be the one who's doing all the heavy lifting and a woman should be the one who, you know, stays in the house as the queen, take care of the, takes care of the kids, whatever, that is fine. But as soon as you start to push that on other people, that's when it becomes a problem. And that's more or less the problem in our society, especially in America, where everything is shoved down everybody else's throats, whether it be a matter of gender roles or a matter of sexual sexuality. That's right. horrible. Right. I agree. So, um... Probably should stop slamming the table. I'm going to shake your camera down. <laughs> if you want to slam the table, you can. <laughs> your phone's going to fall down. <laughs> true. Now, they, now they know it's a phone. Instead of a, a, a very fancy camera. I mean, it is a fancy camera. <laughs> it's too late. I'm not trying to say too late. I'm literally saying, I don't care if it's on a phone. It's a fancy camera. <laughs> oh, she's so nice. You're so nice. Where's that flag that you had? Oh, hang on. Whoa. <laughs> Things like a cape. Yeah, it's a big one. Is this even going to fit in the frame? You can see the colors. Yeah, you can get the, the Wait, right? idea. Can you, see, can you see the purple? <laughs> Should I go yeah. back? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we turn off the flag. <laughs> so you want to tell people about the flag? Sure. So, um... You just show off the flag and just tuck it away somewhere. It's a, it's a big flag. I can't really tuck it. <laughs> Um, but what I can do is I have a cup with the colors on it. Ah. Which is reflecting off the window. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so if you have any inclination of the LGBTQA community or any kind of pride stuff, you've probably heard of pride flags. Uh, and the most traditional one is the rainbow flag for uh, the gay LGBTQ community. 
but all those colors eventually spread out and break down into other pride flags. There's pride flags for people who are bi, there's pride flags for people who are non-binary, there's pride flags for everything. So there is also pride flags for asexuality. And that even spans into other flags, whereas in, um, and I haven't done a ton of research on this myself, I just stick to the general, these colors, but there are, uh, you know, before we even get into this, we need to talk about different parts of asexuality. Because as we were mentioning before, there are some asexuals who are romantically inclined and some who are not. So within asexuality, you have different brackets of uh, different attractions. Whereas for myself, I'm considered hetero-romantic asexual because I am completely sexually repulsed and I have no attraction for that. However, I am romantically attracted to men, someone of the opposite sex to me being a woman. Mm -hmm. So I have a boyfriend and uh, we are in a happy relationship without all that stuff that most people like in relationships. <laughs> like, I literally gag thinking about it. <laughs> and there's nothing against my boyfriend. It is literally just, ugh. Um, <laughs> and, uh, my boyfriend is considered demisexual, meaning that in the past, he has had sexual relationships. Right. But it's something that he could do with or without. So he is romantic, so he is attracted to women, so he's a hetero-romantic man, but he's demisexual because if he were to be involved in a sexual relationship, it would have to be something that he had a very strong connection with somebody. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's great, right? Yeah, I admire that too. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to me because when I first heard the term demisexual, I was like, isn't that just normal relationships? Because to me, that just sounds like the safest option. Right. But it's cool that, and you know, some people be like, oh, we have to label everything now. But it's nice that people have a term to relate to it. Like, if I didn't know asexuality was a thing, let alone a term, I would still be stuck fighting my own, like, insecurities about everything. Right. Which sucks, so... I love labels. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> they're, they're, they're good, they're good in, in terms of this, where you have something that you like and can relate to. Right. Um... But I mean, it can go all sorts of different ways. We're like, me and my boyfriend, we're pretty much just good watching cartoons, cuddling, hugging, kissing, but not really much more than that. I want that. <laughs> I want to get that. I think we're having a revelation here, Danny. <laughs> I think we are. Okay. Because like, I, I like that idea. Okay. I could do that like all day long. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, I think that's great. Like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe switch up the cartoons, but like... Yes. <laughs> you know, I think, I think, I think that's solid. Yeah, I think it's that's very nice. Solid. But uh, there's people who do. I mean, asexuality covers all sorts of things. I don't have all the colors. I don't have all the charts. I don't know all the names. I just know what I am, more or less. I am not an expert. I am just more of someone who promotes that. Hey, this is a thing. If you think you're this thing, be who you are. Be who you are. I like yeah. that. Um, but like, so it's it's just everything. There's hetero romantic. There's bi romantic. There's um homoromantic, there are people who, you know, we've all met the type of bachelor or bachelorette person who they're not into relationships, they're just into having sex. That can kind of fall into spectrums in itself, where, like, if there's sex without love, why not love without sex? Hmm. And in between all that, there's also people who, while they are asexual, they're not sex-repulsed like I am. They might be willing to, you know help their partner who might be more sexually inclined or, you know, people who are asexual still have sex to have kids. Right. Please remember this is a 13 plus channel again, or just this discussion at least, because I'm dropping a lot of information that I normally wouldn't, but we have to cover all the parts of asexuality. <laughs> you can't have asexuality without sexuality, unfortunately. So that's the whole reason this is even a thing. Um, because normally this is not the kind of stuff I like to talk about. I am just the Disney princess who's in my own little world of like, this is not a thing. Um, <laughs> you know what? She's very accurate and uh, she's self-aware. She knows, I she knows who she is. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are they going with this? Uh, but yes, yeah, so it, it, it covers all sorts of grounds. And also just because you have sex or have had sex or have like a very dirty sense of humor does not mean you're not asexual either. Hmm. Like I said, asexuality pretty much 
when you take all these different spectrums and bundle them into one thing, the main premise is someone who is not sexually attracted. They can still have sex and still enjoy it, potentially, but there's no attraction. That's where it all falls down into the main part of it. There was a great comic I found when I first came out, when I came out... Blah, blah, blah. There was a great comic, like a comic strip, that I found when I first came out as asexual, and it simply said that for people who still have sex and consider them as asexual, sex is like ice cream. You don't have to be hungry to enjoy it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I can see that. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I don't even know like, if I have questions anymore, but I... <laughs> don't have any questions anymore okay it's just like you covered like so much and like my mind is blown yeah i hope i didn't confuse anyone because it's really hard for me to stay on track sometimes but wow. um with, but, with, but you're better than i am though like i'm terrible at staying on track <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so the colors on the different flags represent different things i don't 100 percent actually this is what google is for what the asexual flag means because i always forget and i either get it reverse or Something's wrong. All I know is I am heteroromantic and I have to keep telling people that when they're like, but you don't have sex? It's like, no, I don't. And that's fine. And you shouldn't be pestering me about it. Because believe me, there are still plenty of people out there who, even though for me coming out as asexual has been like such a crazy, amazing experience of just being able to be myself, but there are still times when people are like, I bet you just haven't met the right person. Or like all sorts of stupid, dumb questions. Let's see. Okay. The asexual pride flag was created in August of 2010 to help raise awareness of asexuality. Like other pride flags, each colored stripe has a different meaning. Black, and I lost my place, means asexuality. Gray means gray asexuality, a gray area between asexuality and sexuality, and demisexuality. White means sexuality, and purple is for the community. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there are asexuals who are sex repulsed, there are asexuals who are sex positive, and there are asexuals who still don't really know where they, found, where they land on the spectrum. Demisexuality is also kind of in the gray ace area because you're kind of at both ends. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, I'd like to thank you once again <laughs> for being on the show. And it, it's awesome to, like, open people's eyes and, like, bring asexuality to the public. Yeah. Well, the bigger public, yes. I would say. The bigger spectrum of the world. The bigger spectrum of the world. And, well, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Yes. And, um, yeah. <laughs> We're trying Thumbs again. Up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like and subscribe. Like it and subscribe it. If you like it, subscribe it. Yeah. And um, if you like the other videos, subscribe. Even if you just like Nicole, subscribe. Or just me. Just just subscribe. <laughs> it's all we want. Yeah. And if you have any questions about things that we talked about today, um, you can either leave them in the comments and Danny will forward them to me. Or you can check out various sources online like aven.org, that's A-V-E-N.org, which is the asexuality website, and there's tons of forums for people of all ages, children, parents, everything you need to know about the asexuality spectrum. There's also various groups on Facebook. Uh, there's simply just a group called Asexuality. It's got like almost 10,000 people in it, um, and it covers all everything you want to know, any questions you have. Uh, and there are also different asexual... Uh, communities within different states. Like I follow a New York City asexual group and I'm going to try to make a Long Island based asexuality meetup at some point. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm still trying to find a venue. But yeah, um, you know, this is definitely something that, again, like we kind of said at the beginning of the video-ish, this is definitely a 13 plus kind of thing. Not to say that you can't come out of something earlier, but it's definitely something you should have had the talk first before you want to jump the gun on that. And, you know, don't be afraid to come out, be yourself, and talk to people about it. Definitely. So, we'll see you later. Yep. See ya. <laughs>